What if I told you that humans were moving heavy stuff efficiently, like thousands of years before the wheel? Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's pretty wild. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. We're talking sleds uh, way before wheels. We'll be diving into two articles today. Archaeologists find the world's oldest handcart thousands of years before the wheel was invented, and fossil footprints reveal what may be the oldest known handcart's new research. Really digs into some uh, incredible discoveries that are changing how we think about early humans. So picture this, White Sands National Park 22,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Ice Age is ending. We've got mammoths, giant sloths, and uh, alongside their footprints, researchers find human footprints too. Typical stuff for an archeological dig, right? Right, except mixed in with those footprints, they find something super unexpected. Long parallel drag marks in the mud. Oh. Some of them stretch for dozens of meters. Okay. And these weren't just some random like scrapes. They were too consistent to be accidental. Right. And often intersect with children's footprints. It's like a whole Ice Age family went grocery shopping. Ha uh ha, -huh. that's a great analogy. To figure out what these marks meant, researchers had to put on their detective hats. So they did what any good researcher would do, got their hands dirty. They dragged wooden poles across mud flats, which are basically areas of mud that are exposed when the tide goes out in the UK and the US. Smart. And guess what? The marks they made were strikingly similar to those found at White Sands. This led them to believe that these ancient humans were using a sled-like device called a travoy. I see, okay. Now, if you're like me, you probably think of sleds as just for snow. Yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. But a travoy is actually much more versatile. It's basically two long poles with a platform or net stretched between them. You can pile stuff on it and drag it across all kinds of terrain, sand, mud, you name it. Like the ultimate prehistoric moving truck. Uh-huh, exactly. And the fact that they were using this thousands of years before the wheel is mind-blowing. Talk about ingenuity. Right. Really changes our assumptions about, uh, about how technology developed. It makes you wonder what other incredible innovations are out there just waiting to be unearthed. Speaking of unearthing amazing stuff, we're unearthing new episodes like this one all the time. If you're enjoying this deep dive into prehistoric problem solving, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. Now back to those Travoy marks. Remember how we mentioned they often intersect with children's footprints? Yeah, I do. Researchers believe it suggests that families work together with children actively involved in transporting goods. Interesting. So it wasn't just a prehistoric dad dragging stuff around. Uh-huh. Not quite. It seems early humans understood the concept of teamwork and shared responsibility from a very young age. That makes a lot of sense. In a harsh environment like the Ice Age, survival would have depended on everyone pulling their weight. Exactly. This discovery gives us a unique glimpse into the social dynamics of these early human families. Cool. It's also a reminder that even though they lived in a vastly different world, they faced challenges and found solutions in ways that are still relatable today. That's true. And and the fact that variations of the Travoy are still used by some indigenous communities today speaks volumes about the practicality of this simple invention. It's a testament to the timelessness of human ingenuity. Hmm. So we've established that humans were using sleds long before wheels. But what does this really mean? Yeah, what does it mean? Well, for starters, it flips the script on what we thought we knew about early human technology. The wheel is often seen as this monumental invention that kickstarted progress. But this discovery shows that humans were finding clever ways to move heavy loads and adapt to their environment long before that. So the Travoy wasn't just some, some random isolated invention. Not at all. It's likely that the development of the Travoy was a stepping stone, a crucial precursor to more complex forms of transportation. Mm. Kind of like the first draft before the masterpiece. Yeah, I like that. And it highlights a crucial point about human innovation. It's rarely a sudden leap forward. It's usually a gradual process of trial and error, of building upon existing knowledge and finding new ways to apply it. Right, right. It's like those life hack videos you see online. People are always finding new and creative ways to use everyday objects. Yeah. And that same spirit of resourcefulness and problem solving was alive and well in our Ice Age ancestors. I like that. This is all incredibly fascinating, but I'm curious to know more about the specifics of the Travoy itself. How did they actually build these things? What materials did they use? And how do they figure out the design? Those are great questions, and that's exactly what we'll be diving into next.
Welcome back to our deep dive into prehistoric problem solving. Where we're learning that humans were way ahead of their time when it came to moving stuff around. Exactly. And you had some great questions about how these travois were actually constructed. Yeah, it's easy to imagine the basic concept, like two poles and a platform. Mm -hmm. But what about the nitty gritty details? Well, unfortunately, we don't have a perfectly preserved travois from 22,000 years ago just sitting in a museum. Right, that would be way too easy. But archaeologists can make some pretty good guesses based on the evidence we do have. Like those grag marks at White Sands. Yeah. Exactly the length and depth of the marks combined with what we know about the environment back then can tell us a lot about the size and weight of the travoy. So what are we thinking? Redwood trees and titanium platforms. Not quite remember. These were Ice Age hunter-gatherers, so they would use materials that were readily available. So like wood and animal hides. Most likely, yeah. The poles were probably made from sturdy branches or saplings, and the platform could have been anything from woven reeds to animal skins. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. It's all about using what you have. Exactly. It speaks to their resourcefulness and adaptability. I mean, they didn't have access to hardware stores or online tutorials. Right. So they had to rely on their knowledge of the natural world and their own ingenuity. Okay. So they've got their materials now. How are they actually putting this thing together? Did they have prehistoric power tools? Uh-huh. I doubt they had power drills back then, but they probably used tools like stone axes and flint knives to shape and secure the wood. And for binding materials, they might have used strips of hide or plant fibers. It's amazing to think they were able to create something so functional and durable using such basic tools. It really is, and it highlights the importance of learned skills and knowledge transfer within these early human communities. You know, these techniques wouldn't have just appeared out of thin air. Right, they were passed down through generations, probably with a lot of trial and error along the way. Exactly, and it makes you wonder, what were those early prototypes like? Were there epic travoy fails along the way? I would love to see a blooper reel of prehistoric engineering mishaps. Oh, I'm sure there were plenty. But ultimately, they figured it out. And the fact that variations of the travois are still used today is a testament to the effectiveness of their design. Speaking of variations, do we have any idea how the travois might have evolved over time? Did they add cup holders or fuzzy dice? Maybe not cup holders, haha, but it's certainly possible that the design was refined and adapted over time, depending on the needs and resources of different groups. Like maybe they added a canopy for shade or a basket for carrying smaller items. Exactly. And as humans migrated and encountered new environments, they likely modified the travois to suit those specific terrains and challenges. So the travois wasn't just a static invention. It was constantly evolving, just like the humans who used it. That's a great point. It reflects that dynamic interplay between human ingenuity and environmental pressures. Okay, so we've covered the materials, the construction, and the potential evolution of the travois. But I'm still curious about its impact on these early human societies. Did it change the way they lived? That's a great question, and it's one that archaeologists are still exploring, but there's no doubt that the Travoy had a significant impact on their way of life. Well, I can imagine it made a huge difference in terms of mobility and efficiency. Absolutely. Before the Travoy, they were limited to carrying everything on their backs or dragging things by hand. Oh, man. Talk about a backache. Right. But with the Travoy, they could transport much heavier loads over longer distances, this would have opened up new possibilities for hunting, gathering, and even migrating. So they were able to cover more ground and access resources that were further away. Exactly. And that increased efficiency would have had a ripple effect on other aspects of their lives, like social structure and territorial range. It's fascinating to think how a simple invention like this could have such a profound impact on a whole society. It really is. And it highlights the interconnectedness of technology, culture, and human behavior. This is all incredibly insightful, but I want to make sure our listeners don't miss out on future deep dives like this one. Right. If you're enjoying this journey into the world of prehistoric ingenuity, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be alerted whenever we release a new episode. And you won't have to worry about missing out on any fascinating insights into the past. Now back to the Ice Age. We've talked about the practical advantages of the Travoy, but I'm wondering if it also had any symbolic or cultural significance for these early humans? That's an intriguing question and one that's a bit harder to answer definitively. We don't have written records or detailed artistic representations from that time period. Right. It's not like they were carving emojis into cave walls. But we can look for clues in the archaeological record and in the traditions of later cultures. So what kind of clues are we talking about? Well, for example, the fact that children were involved in using the travois suggests that it might have been seen as a symbol of 
family unity and shared responsibility. Like a prehistoric family minivan. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe not a minivan, but the idea is similar. You know, it represented a shared effort, a way of working together to achieve a common goal. And that sense of community would have been crucial for survival in such a challenging environment. Absolutely. And it's possible that the Travoy also played a role in rituals or ceremonies. Like maybe they decorated it for special occasions or used it to transport important objects. Exactly. We know that many cultures throughout history have imbued objects of transportation with symbolic meaning. Think of chariots in ancient Rome hmm. or ceremonial carriages in royal processions. Right. So it's not a stretch to imagine that the Travoy might have held a similar significance for these early humans. It's amazing to think that something as seemingly simple as a sled could have been so interwoven with their beliefs and traditions. It speaks to the depth and complexity of human culture, even in the distant past. So we've explored the practical aspects of the Travois, its potential cultural significance, and its impact on early human societies. But one question still lingers in my mind. What's that? How did this knowledge spread? Was the Travois a uniquely American invention? Or did similar ideas emerge independently in other parts of the world? That's what we'll explore when we return for the final part of our deep dive. Welcome back to the deep dive, where we're exploring the world of prehistoric innovation and asking the big questions. And as we wrapped up the last part, we were wondering about the Travois' global reach. Yet was this brilliant sled-like device something that just popped up in the Americas? Or did other cultures around the world come up with similar solutions? Well, it's a fascinating question and one that takes us on a bit of a journey through time and across continents. So are we talking time traveling Travois? Uh -huh. Not quite, but we do have to look at the broader context of human migration and cultural exchange during the late Pleistocene. Okay, rewind a bit. The late Pleistocene, that's the period we're talking about right when mammoths and giant sloths were still roaming around. Exactly. It's the epoch that lasted from about 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago. And during that time, humans were spreading out across the globe, adapting to all sorts of different environments. So they weren't just chilling in one spot. They were on the move, exploring, figuring things out. Right. And as they moved and encountered new challenges, they innovated, they developed tools and techniques to survive and thrive in these new lands. Makes sense. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? Exactly. And when we look at the archaeological record from different parts of the world, we do see evidence of sled-like devices popping up in various cultures. So it wasn't just a uniquely American invention. It seems not. While the specific designs and materials varied, the underlying concept of using a platform on runners to transport goods appears in several different places. So are we talking Travoy cousins all over the world? You could say that, for example, in Europe, archaeologists have found evidence of sleds being used to transport large stones for building megalithic structures. Those are the giant stone monuments like Stonehenge, right? Exactly. And it's thought that sleds might have been crucial for moving those massive stones across long distances. That makes sense. I can't imagine trying to carry those things by hand. And then in Siberia, we have evidence of sleds being used by nomadic reindeer herders. So they were using them to move their belongings as they followed the reindeer herds. Precisely. And the designs of these Siberian sleds share some similarities with the travoy found in North America. So are we saying that these different cultures invented the sled independently, or did they learn about it from each other? That's the million-dollar question. It's difficult to say for certain whether it was a case of independent invention or a cultural diffusion. So did they come up with the idea on their own, or did they see someone else doing it and think, hey, that's a good idea? Yeah, exactly. It's possible that the basic concept of the sled was invented multiple times in different parts of the world, driven by similar needs and environmental pressures. Like if you're living in a place with snow or rough terrain, you're going to figure out a way to move things more easily. Right. But it's also possible that there was some level of cultural exchange happening. Humans weren't living in isolation during this period. They were trading, interacting, and potentially sharing ideas. So it's like a prehistoric version of the internet. People sharing their life hacks and DIY projects. Well, maybe not the internet, but there were definitely networks of communication and exchange. And it's fascinating to think that the humble sled, this seemingly simple invention, might have been part of that global network of ideas. It really highlights the interconnectedness of human history and how innovation can spread across vast distances. It's also a reminder that there's still so much we don't know about the past and how our ancestors lived and interacted. Exactly. And each new discovery has the potential to reshape our understanding of human ingenuity and cultural exchange. Well, this has been an incredible journey into the world of prehistoric problem solving. 
from the deserts of New Mexico to the snowy landscapes of Siberia. And it's all thanks to the simple yet brilliant invention of the Travoy. A testament to the resourcefulness and adaptability of our ancestors. And a reminder that even the most basic technologies can have a profound impact on human history. So what do you think about all this? Were you surprised to learn that humans were using sleds thousands of years before the wheel? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the fascinating world of history and archaeology.